Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. This is the first video I'm going to do in a series of videos that I'm pretty sure I'm going to call Protect the LAN, um, where I'm focusing on access layer security solutions that we can put in place to help add to the overall onion of security. Uh, this first video was inspired by Quidzop, who is um, a Linux YouTuber. He does a lot of distro reviews, but he has some fantastic uh, security focused reviews where he's demoing how to do perform certain attacks uh, in Kali Linux and uh, I don't even want to try and sum up some of the cool stuff that he's done in his uh, security focused videos. I'll just link to him below and I'll link to the video where he demonstrates this attack most recently. I think it was a follow-up from a 2012 video. But um, the attack is doing an IPv6 router advertisement flood it seems that Linux and BSD are mostly immune to this attack. However, Windows, even on up to Windows 10 here, is still quite vulnerable. Um, in this virtual machine, it's hard to show how bad the attack is because honestly, my VM will just completely lock up. But um, network traffic will completely cease to flow. Um, it's a full-on DOS attack for any Windows host attacked, attached to the same subnet as the attacker node. The attacker node in this case is an Odroid C2. It's um, running Kali Linux. If you're not familiar with the Odroid C2, it looks a lot like a Raspberry Pi. Um, it just has, I think, two gigs of RAM and a quad-core ARM processor and a gig uh, interface, so it can, you know, deliver a pretty powerful punch on that. So. Um, again, the attack is isolated so that they, the host has to be on the same subnet as you, but I wouldn't downplay the severity of the attack based on that alone. I mean, a lot of places when they deploy their access layer switches don't deploy any of the security features that we'll cover in these next few videos that I put out. Um, so if an attacker were to walk up to a receptionist desk, unplug that receptionist computer from that, plug Kali Linux in, they could even put like a bridge in place um, so that the receptionist didn't know she was offline. You know, a lot of times you can just plug that, you know, your little Odroid C2 or, or whatever, your, your Raspberry Pi, plug it in on net on any available switch port performance attack, and you could DOS, you know, hundreds of machines potentially. Uh, and heaven forbid if it's a totally flat network and you hit people's servers and all kinds of nasty stuff can happen. Um, so that's the focus of these videos, but um, I do want to point out that in Windows, if IPv6 is disabled on the NIC, you know, you for whatever reason, it's turned off here. Um, this attack is moot. It would have no effect on the host. I'm not recommending this as you know the solution to how to mitigate this attack because this might not be viable for most people. You might be running IPv6 on your network and you can't afford to turn it off for all your hosts. But just pointing out that if in your environment it is disabled for whatever reason, um, this attack would have no effect. Um, but I'm not going to disable it or, or show any of that. Um, likewise, my lab environment is pretty isolated, so there's no internet access to these hosts, so I can't show you that web pages won't load. If you check out Quid's Up video, again, linked below, he shows um, you know how you can't browse the web or anything. I'm just going to do a basic ping to my default gateway and keep that running. Um, unfortunately, again, the VM completely seizes when this attack's running, so all you'll see is that the ping just seems to stop. Um, and then I can't do anything, just to preface that. Uh, so the attack looks like this. Um, I'm going to do attack six hyphen flood underscore router 26, and then I specify an outgoing interface, which for me is ETH zero. And then you'll notice again, my Windows 10 target here, he's happy, everything seems to be working, I got a ping running, but the second I run this attack, the VM is completely hosed can't do anything. Just dead to the world. Uh, if this were a physical machine, you would just see that network traffic traffic comes to a complete halt. Then I'll end it. And it takes a second for it to recover here. You'll see the CPU spike uh, spiked up to 100% briefly. Still trying to recover. And uh, here we go. And pings are coming back. And you'll notice also that Windows tries to install prefixes learned from the um, router advertisements and tries to put them into, uh, if you run IPv IP config switch all, you'll see all those prefixes installed. Um, and it makes a whole just nasty mess on Windows. We'll clear that out. So in Cisco land, how we can mitigate this on our catalyst switches 
is we go into global config and we say IPv6 ND RA guard policy and then we make up a policy name. I'm going to call mine hosts but you could call yours whatever. Um, and you'll notice that when we try and specify device role we have a few options here. Uh, we can specify that the policy is this policy is designed to be applied towards host ports it could be monitor only it could be connecting to an IPv6 router um, so a host that we would be expecting IPv6 uh, router advertisements to come from um, or connect to another switch for this demo we're just going to use device role as host because again I don't have any IPv6 routers that would be sending legitimate router advertisements and then we're going to go on to gig02 and gig014. I put my range command in. Boom, like that. And we say IPv6 and D are a guard attach policy hosts. You'll note too that, I mean, you can specify specifically what VLAN, if this is going on to a trunk, and there's a few other options. But this, these are just access ports, um, both running in VLAN 1776. So I'm going to just attach the policy. I won't specify a specific VLAN. And again, policy name I used was hosts. So I do that. Some basic show commands. We do show IPv6 and D are a guard and our policy name hosts. And we'll see again, we've applied to port two and 14. The features are a guard applied to all VLANs, blah, blah, blah. Um, the other one that we can do is show IPv6 snooping. Uh, we'll look at counters is one that we're going to look at whenever we run the attack again. And gig014 is the port that I have my little Kali Linux box on. And you can see right now it hasn't dropped any IPv6 packets. Everything is all hunky-dory. So I'll get my continuous ping running again. And I do want to point out that when I run this attack, you will see the response time spike up a good bit. Um, this isn't free to run. Um, there's a, a little bit of a, CT, a CPU toll taken by the switch. Uh, I would point out that that wouldn't really affect your internet browsing or accessing network resources. It's just that as the switch has to use its CPU to send ICMP responses, um, since it's also, you know, a CPU intensive to do our to run RA guard, those C ICMP responses from the switch could be a little bit slow. But um, overall, network performance would not be hindered. So I'll run attack six or router attack six flood router twenty six, and we'll flood that interface again. And you can see this time, my ping keeps running, no drop packets. As expected, uh, the switch is a little slower to respond because it's dealing with dropping these uh, rogue router advertisements. But overall, seems good. CPU hasn't really spiked. But if we go back over to our switch and we look at counters for gig 014, which is where uh, Kali Linux is connected, you can see that it is now actively dropping router advertisements. And it's giving us a reason here that um, we're receiving these router advertisements on an unauthorized port. And it is CPU intensive, but with one attacker constantly flooding the network, um, it doesn't exactly DOS the switch though. I mean, we can do show processes, CPU, sort it, and then we'll exclude anything that's zero. You can see right now this process is running about 42%. Um, but again, it wouldn't have any impact on data plane processing. It's, this is just all your control plane stuff. Um, but I mean, the network as a whole would still function and everything is running just fine, even though we have this massive flood of router advertisements being sent out on net. So that's all I want to demo for this video. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. And um, same with our future protect the land videos where we look at some other access layer security features. So I hope this has been informative, guys, and I will catch you next time.